Jermaine Luminor was a solid right tackle last year. He was the second best Las Vegas Raiders offensive lineman behind left tackle Colt Miller due in large part to his versatility. He can effectively play every position on the offensive line except center. There's big value in that, but it won't guarantee him the right tackle spot this year. Illumina has some stiff competition for that spot, just like he did last year. 2022 seventh round pick Theron Mumford is an absolute steal. He was a first round prospect as a left tackle going into 2021, but switched to guard for the team and didn't have a good year. So he came to Vegas hungry to show what he can do. It just so happened that Illuminor, who never really got a chance to be that guy, was hungry too. Of course, he had the veteran advantage too, but he took him half the season to fully take the spot. Even after that, the Raiders got Mumford on the field for a few snaps. He started two games through the injury too, so he played a lot of football as a rookie. Now he's in year two, the year players make their biggest jump. This will be an interesting competition because when one guy doesn't do well, the other guy does do well. Example 1. When Illuminor is past blocking, he's susceptible to bull rushes. At times he oversets and stands parallel so the edge rusher can run right through the middle of him. Illuminor has short arms too so he's going to have trouble with guys that have long arms and know how to use their hands. Frank Clark's going to come with the one arm stab here or the long arm and he's going to own Illuminor. Here's another example of how Luminor struggles with guys with long arms. And here Chris Jones wins this hand fight. And Mumford, well, he catches and stops those bull rushes. It's a little harder to bull rush a guy that has long arms and can touch you before you can touch him. Man, this is darn near a bull rush turn pancake here. Joey Bosa's feet got tangled up though, but it was still a good comeback by Munford. Then there are those long arms that are over 35 inches long. He has some independent hand usage here. And it's hard to get that long arm to work on a guy that has longer arms than you. Here's another guy with a long arm that isn't long enough. The problem with Mumford sometimes is he doesn't pull the trigger fast enough. It's like boxing. When you have long arms, you don't wait for the guy to get up on you. You go first. Or you pay like that. You gotta shoot those hands too. You can't just casually place those hands on them. Otherwise, you lose the hand fight and lose the battle. He was gonna take too long to get off and be lazy with his hands and he's gonna get cross chopped. And unless you're really latched on inside, you better bring those hands back and launch them again. Otherwise they will get slapped down. In boxing, lazy hands will get you knocked out. In football, lazy hands will get your quarterback knocked out. One area Illuminor is good in is getting those hands off. You can tell he knows his distance and as soon as this guy's in range, bam, he's popping him. That's how he's able to survive a tackle in the NFL. Another thing he does is close the distance quickly so he can shoot his hands. This is nice here. He's going to make Mac miss that cross drop and get his hands on him. He was going to get hit with the cross chop, but he's going to get his hands right back in place.
Now we go to run blocking. Sometimes Mumford has problems with guys at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. You can't be lazy with your hands in the run game either. He's not the point of attack here, but he gets abused. Here he just never could get his guy under control. Man, I don't know what he's trying to do here. There are times that he's really good run blocking, but there are too many instances like this. Now, Luminor at 6'4", 345 pounds, he's going to move some guys off the line of scrimmage and turn some guys. Watch him open up the hole on this game winner. Look at the movement he gets here. Here we got a combo block and the guard doesn't have to stay too long because Luminor got it. Since this is Chris Jones, he might want to stay in double here. It's funny how a weakness for one is a strength for the other. Now we go to a weakness for Luminor. He doesn't climb to the second level that well. I think that's why he didn't play too much in Tom Cable's predominant zone blocking system. He can't cut that linebacker off. Here the Raiders are running outside and Luminor just can't get to the linebacker. Here, the Indianapolis Colts linebacker doesn't make the tackle, but he could have. There's nothing else to say. He's just not quick enough. Look at this one. He's going to throw a no-hitter until the play's over. Now in contrast, Mumford gets to that second level. The linebacker actually made it easy and came right to him on this one. And he's gonna go get him on this one. He was going to combo off to the linebacker. He was going to do a good job of going after that linebacker and latching on when he gets there. And this second level block is going to be the key to running back Josh Jacobs making it to the end zone. Now I see why it took so long for the coaches to figure out who they wanted to give more snaps to a right tackle last year. It was a good competition and it seemed like where one guy was weak, the other guy was strong. To me, overall, Munford has the advantage in pass protection because he has longer arms and he doesn't overset. Illuminor has the advantage in the run game because he's stronger, heavier, and he comes off the ball with more balance and knee bend. This race is tough to call, but here's one factor. Mumford is making his big jump to year two, and how much more is Luminor going to improve? Another factor is the Raiders need a guard, and Luminor has the size and strength to be really good there. Thank you for watching. See you next time.